Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchmen wake it, but in vain. I gave you these three points that I want you to remember is that the house that you're building must be aimed at fulfilling God's way. The way that God wants is whatever you're building, it needs to be truly connected to the things of God. It is so important that we understand that, that if God is connected to what we do, then things will grow. Watch this. Also, it says here, we must be following the Holy Spirit and leading from God. The next thing, it must not be our ideals, but God leading our ideas. Exodus chapter 25, verse 9 says, it's in the Amplified Version. It says, you shall construct it by everything that I am going to show you as the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all and his furniture. So it's important that we know that God gives us a pattern to do things. And the pattern is lined up in the word, the way that a house will be physically built. Everything that's been built, God has designed it. I was watching um, uh, the storm on this past week, uh, hur uh, Hurricane Nicole, that came through and destroyed property, just destroyed things. And one thing I noticed was that some of the property was built on next to a beach. Something that the commentators said that makes so much sense. They had some builders out there talking. They said, this here cannot be restructured because they built it on sand. He said, what's happening is that the water keeps washing up and taking away parts. Every time a tide comes in, it washes up and takes things away. Every time the tide comes in or a huge hurricane comes, it takes more portion of the land that something is built on. And I thought about that. It, it, what if it was built on rock? What if it was not built on sand? It was built on rock. There was something about that that came alive in me that we're sometimes building just for gratification. We're building just because it looks good. We are building because we are desiring something that's not in the will of God. And if God gives us a foundation, we must put it on that foundation. So I ask you today, how are you building? How big is your vision? Is your vision a way you can touch it? Or is it so big that God has to put his hands in it to make it work. So the visions that we have must be truly bigger. But where we build and how we build is so important. You know, some of us want bigger life, we want bigger things and bigger houses and bigger cars. But when it comes to the things in this life, we want them to be the biggest. I don't know about you. I don't care. I want me a nice big house. I want a nice home with more room because room is important to me. So when it comes to this, if we could win the lottery... When we, are, when, we, when, we, when we win the lottery, we want the biggest number. We accept the biggest number. But I found something out. I was listening to a young lady. I can't remember her name. It was on Instagram when she was talking about when you win the lottery. She says, ask, what would you do? Would you take the lump sum or would you take um, the actual payments that comes out every year? And I listened to her for a minute because most people, we like the biggest things. We want to take the biggest jump. We're ready, if it's a billion dollars, we'd rather take the billion and we'll take the lower payout. But she said something that was so powerful and that will help me with this message today. She said that if you take it, take the money every year. Because what happens is you'll receive a huge amount. The taxes won't be so big because the taxes on a billion dollars, I don't know what that amount is. But if you take that amount, it's going to be a huge amount. But if you take it a little bit by a little bit, then the tax inquisitions are not so much. And here's another thing, that that money will grow as you leave it and, 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 and take it. And take it by the year. So what I'm saying to you is that sometimes it's not so good to take the huge jump. Or the huge things. It's good for us to make sure that we take that thing a little bit. And take it in time. That's what God is saying to us. That I want you to do this thing by step. By a pattern. And patterns take time. Patterns take time to trace and do. And listen to the voice of God. Because it is important to know that God wants your vision to be huge. But he wants you to take the proper steps. So it's, it's important that life becomes everything that we want it to be, that is bigger and that is connected. If we would get to a certain status, everything that seemed big in our life would become small. The increase of anything increases everything around you. If you have a problem with money, you would just have a big problem with money. 
So let's say it's like if you, if you have a problem with saving or you have a problem with spending money or, or spending everything up, if you have a problem with that, then if you get a bunch of money, the problem still exists. So that's why it's good to take those small steps in what we do. It is so good for us to take the small steps in the things that we do so God can watch us grow, so God can help us to grow. He watches what you do with little. I appreciate that message a while back. He watches what you do with little. If, if you are chosen for greatness because you were designed with the image of God inside of you, you're chosen for greatness. You're chosen to do things big. You're chosen to do things great. You're chosen to build things and, and keep. Regardless of where you are now, God can bring you up immediately if he can trust you with little. Psalms 127 says this in the New International Version. 1 and 27 says, so God created mankind in his own image. God created you in his image. He created your vision in his image. His purpose was for you to do the things that God wanted you to do. He created you for a huge portion of this world. And some of us are just too lazy to do the things that God has called us to do. So the vision is big. The vision is huge. And the devil want to make you feel like because you feel like you're in a small space now. And things are not growing. I'm too old. He's trying to bring those things to you. But what I want you to know is God can use you at any time. Just be ready. Be faithful. And be persistent. Here's the next thing it says. The scripture says this is great. And he says this. That he created them. He created them male and female. He created them. So it simply means that you're great, you're royal, you're part of what God has for your life. It's important that you know that in this thing that God needs you, God loves you. He wants you to do the work that he's called you to do. But you have to be persistent. You have to dream big. I was watching an a, 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 a Instagram, I think it's from Chris Hodges. He said, keep dreaming, keep dreaming. What are you doing? Keep dreaming. Don't stop dreaming because dreams will come to if you work them effectively. First Peter 2 and 9 says this, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. And you see that. His special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. That means that God called you out of this darkness. He has called you out of this thing to be into his light. He has great purpose for your life. He wants you to do more. He wants you to be more. He wants you to see more. Don't give up. Don't stop. Keep pursuing what God has called you to do with your vision, with your dream, with your nonprofit, with your church. Whatever he has called you to do, keep dreaming big because he's waiting on you to move to your next level. You got to go through your problems. You got to go through your situations. You got to go through your trials because he's aligned your life to go through so you can help somebody else out. He's waiting on you. So keep pursuing your vision.